Duncan Keith is now an Edmonton Oiler. So it's official, eh? It's officially official. And who's going the other way? Caleb Jones. Straight up? No, I'll, uh, I'll read the tweet to you here. Okay. Um, so here we got Frank Saravalli pending trade call because the call hasn't been made. Duncan Keith will indeed be joining the Oilers in exchange for Caleb Jones and a third or fourth round pick. Oh, and they're not retaining. Doesn't look like it. Now, oh. that's, that's, it's a terrible trade. It's Oilers terrible fans are trade. upset. Now, let me read you a DM I just received from an Oilers fan. Oh. Ready for this? Now, well, I, what did Archaeology guy say, Adam? No, no, it's not. Oh, you're enjoying this, aren't you? You're cackling at the Duncan Keith trade. You're actually an evil person. I know for <laughs> a fact that the second the next podcast starts, you're going to make fun of us. Honestly, I can see why your wife left you. Oh, wow. <laughs> very nice. Yo, you, I told you our DMs are a little insane, man. But this is how upset Oilers fans are. <laughs> so I didn't dark. like that. It's dark, right? I didn't right? like that at all. Oh, yeah. give it a, who cares? It's just some stranger who gives a shit. But so frankly, Elliot Friedman with the official no salary retained. No um, salary retained. That's it's, so it's terrible. It's a terrible deal. The problem here is Duncan Keith's contract is still, they're paying him like he's still prime Duncan Keith. So when you acquire Against him, cap. He is no longer that Duncan Keith. So you shouldn't be paying that price to him against the cap, like you said, Steve. So Edmonton, you royally screwed up. That's that's just it. You're paying a guy as a first uh, first pair defenseman when he's going to be on your third or second pair. That's ridiculous. If, if Kyle Dubas isn't on the phone with Ken Holland the moment these words leave my mouth, I want him fired. Yep. I want him fired. Uh, you should be trying to trade him Morgan Riley in a heartbeat. Not because you don't love Morgan Riley, but because what could you get for Morgan Riley? I, about that. They're, they're, this David. team is talking about paying James Neal not to play for them. They're looking at a Miko Koskinen deal. <sighs> boy, 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 boy. Like, again, there are, we've talked about this. There are merits to having, how old is he? 37? There are merits to having 37-year-old Duncan Keith on your team. There are. There are. I think it is possible he can make your younger defenseman better. And Edmonton needs to insulate their guys because they're throwing them to the wolves right now. They have some guy, Darnell Nurse, Ethan Bear, Evan Bouchard, Philip Broberg. They they got a they got a really decent crop. Caleb Jones. Oh well, n- not so much. Not Caleb Jones. Yeah. But they got a really decent crop of young D men coming up. They do. I uh, wow, boy, I don't get it. You know what? I it don't is? get it. It's a. Uh, what did you say about Pierre Maguire? Uh, I I don't know. He's loud. He's arrogant. No, he. You said he hasn't updated his views on hockey in how long? Uh, like at least a decade and a half. Okay. Would you say the same based on Ken Holland's record? Yeah. Like when was the last time the Detroit Red Wings were good? I'm not talking about first round exit. And by the way, I know Leafs first round exit. I get it. Funny joke. Mm-hmm. When was the last time the Detroit Red Wings got to the second round? I think it might be when they went to the cup final against the Penguins in right. 2009. Was it? I, 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 you know what? Let's find out. It's been quite a long time. It may, may be not that far back, but I believe it it at the, least 2013. The second round was 2012, 2013. They lost to the Blackhawks in the semifinals. Conference semifinal. So second Oof, round. Maroon. In seven games, yeah. That's a long time. And <laughs> Adam's <like>, tweet. <laughs> <laughs> just, sorry. Hashtag no salary retained just like 20 times. <laughs> sorry. I, I had to tweet it. I had to tweet it. No salary oh. retained. The Detroit Red Wings have Man. the Detroit Red Wings have um they have not been good and they've been recovering from the Ken Holland era. For uh, well, since Babcock left, they—I don't even think they've made the playoffs since then. And if they have, it hasn't been for long. Under Blashill, I don't think they've made the playoffs. No. So my question uh, to Oilers fans is, or my question to maybe Connor McDavid and his people are, how long are you going to wait? Man, how long are you going to wait? Do you want to win a cup? Because it's not going to be this, here with this guy. Can I make a prediction right away? Sure. Duncan Keith will be a far better oiler than he has been a Blackhawk over each of the last two years. And that's, that's probably fair. Better players and probably a better team system. He'll put up a shitload of points. 
He Edmonton is where you go if you want points. It is. It's it's where you go. It's not necessarily where you go uh, for the sunset of your career, but if you're looking for a payday and you're not looking at the Oilers as a one or two year option, I think you're out of your mind because you're you're a little bit of hard work away from a spot on the first or second line and maybe the first power play unit and you're set for life. You're set for absolute life. But boy, no salary retained and you gave up a pick and a young defenseman. Boy, you know, that's that's real just, bad, man. That's just, real bad. Uh, to back up Ken Holland here for his, just for his resume. How Under, dare you? As 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 GM of the Detroit Red Wings, he won the Central Division ten times, the regular season conference title five times, the President's Trophy four times, and the Stanley Cup three times. And when when when, when was that? Uh, between uh, that would have been when is it 90, 97? Yep. Uh, 97 and 2014. Is that two or three strikes ago? Or lock it. Or 2018. Sorry. Sorry. 97 and 2018. So Jesse, I love, I love my grandfather. You know? <laughs> I, I love my grandfather. But, but there, was a, there was a day when I was in high school mm-hmm. and I had to help him fix the TV. Mm-hmm. Do you know what my grandfather was? A television repairman. Wow. Shit Actually, changes. Why didn't he? He should have kept up with his industry. Because he was very long since retired. Okay. What do you, what do you retire from being a TV repairman and keep up with the trends? <laughs> no, I didn't know you were Figure out how a plasma TV that, works. That's a very uh, important part of the story listen, you didn't give me. And once you win the Stanley Cup, you don't have to keep up with the trends either. You'll get a job in Edmonton eventually. And it's amazing. Like, Torelli, but imagine Holland. Who else got one? And Kevin Lowe? What a in the 80s. Imagine if instead of asking for help, he refused it and went, I'm a TV repairman, goddammit! I know what I'm doing! He didn't do that. He understood that things changed. All right. Mm. I love... Uh, I'm not. I'm not defending him very Elon. much. This but I trade always is think ridiculous. Of that story. I'm just no. defending Ken Holland's resume as a hockey man. Can I just three say Stanley this? Cups? Like, Can I just say this? Good. All the bullshit we've taken from Oilers fans, and believe me, I get it. But all the bullshit we've taken from you has always centered around this. Just wait till the summer. They're going to have so much cap space. Look at what Ken Holland is doing with your cap space. <laughs> oh, I don't think there's Look, too many Oilers fans going to fight us on this. Look at no. what he's doing to your cap space. My wife isn't with me anymore, but Ken Holland is, he's messing with your cap space. I still live at him. Fuck. You guys don't think that's a little funny? I think it's kind of funny. Not really. I, oh, come on. I, find I understand funny. why you're looking at it with humor, but yeah. like, I don't give a shit. I cannot <laughs> look at that with humor as your friend. I can't be I like, think it's- that's a real knee slapper. <laughs> <laughs> right. What do you, what do you want us to do? Come on, man. That's you're putting up. us in a weird position here. Adam. Good. I hope you're uncomfortable. So- now, uh, keep going, keep going. Well, okay, so it's it's not just clubbing the Oilers over the head uh, and calling them stupid, right? You, you can't just do that. So I'm trying to look at their expansion situation. Like, because people are talking about Caleb Jones like he's a real loss here. Meanwhile, no. I keep hearing, beyond the fact that, like, Caleb Jones, I think, is sort of Edmonton's Travis Dermott, where... You ask any fans about him, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's fine. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be in your lineup tonight? Ah, should he be? (laughs) You know what I mean? So we all agree, you know, roughly the same age. I get it. But they were probably, or people were saying, he's he's a prime Seattle target, right? So they figure, okay, we're losing him for nothing anyway. Let's go get Duncan Keith. Okay. Plus, they give up a pick. But here's here's the truly interesting and amazing thing for me. Was Seattle not the other team besides the Oilers who was in on Keith? I don't know. Were they? I, don't know. That would I be believe surprising. they were. Oh, I didn't hear. Over the last like week, all it's been is Edmonton. Yeah, like, at the he, beginning, yes. it, was, it was any team on the West Coast or Western Canada. And then over the last week, it's just been Edmonton. And I believe his son is in Edmonton. And I think there was a, like a family reason that he wanted yeah, to be in Edmonton. BC. BC. Oh, BC. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Who's, who's no. this, Keith? Keith. Yeah, yeah he yeah. wants to be closer to his kid. Yeah. So 
Great. Which to- makes complete sense. Absolutely. But okay, Calgary's not trading for you because Calgary's a mess. Vancouver can't because they have no cap room. V- Seattle won't because why would they? So that leaves Edmonton. Well, Seattle might be able to. What I'm saying is, Seattle might be able to just pluck them for thir- uh, for free, and then he gave up a third for nothing. Well, and but no, what I'm saying is, okay, so basically the Oilers had no choice. Sorry, the Hawks had no choice but to trade them to the Oilers. Exactly. There wasn't even sure. allowed. They weren't even allowed to have a bidding war on this. I understand what you're saying. So, so like, no yeah, other they were team, handcuffed. Yeah, because no other team could really have them unless it was Seattle, Calgary, Vancouver, or Edmonton. The I only team of those How four. do you lose a deal where you're the only contender to get the player? Exactly. Edmonton For a player can trade. Who's past his prime and paid too much and cost too much against the cap. How Edmonton, is that possible? In this trade, Edmonton could trade with 31 different teams. Chicago could trade with one. Mm-hmm. And Chicago still won. That's sense. unacceptable. It's, it's unacceptable if, if you're the Oilers. It's absolutely unacceptable. I'm looking at their expansion situation. Um, and the real. Uh, hiccup there is Oscar Clefbaum because until I I hear something concrete about what his playing future is he's sort of hard to plan for because if he's going to play again surely you protect him but then if you protect him you have one more slot on defense or none because you're definitely going to protect Nurse you're definitely going to protect Bear Chris Russell you're probably not Right. And up front, McDavid, obviously, Drysaddle, obviously, Nugent Hopkins, obviously, Pooley RV, obviously. Uh, but then, ah, uh, there's Kaylor Yamamoto. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what they're doing. Because so, I'm pretty sure they're about to expose Duncan Keith. And if they don't, and they protect him. <laughs> Seattle, but Seattle's not going to take Duncan Keith. No, they're not. Like, that's not, that's not a thing. No, you can leave him surely. exposed. I, like that's the, I don't think that's an issue. They they are worried. They're like, oh, if we leave him, Seattle's going to take him. No, not when Seattle would have went and got him if they really wanted him. If you want a defenseman who's thirty thousand years old, Mark Giordano's available and still good, worth the money you're paying him for True. another year. Duncan True. Keith's got three more, and he's not. And and it doesn't mean that Duncan Keith isn't an NHL player. It means that relative to what he makes, he doesn't bring that value. I'm not even sure he brings half the value. And so Mark Spector tweeted this. You guys tell me what you think of this. He said, so no salary retained by Chicago. Of the 11.1 cap hit remaining, I guess, with um, Duncan Keith, there is only $3.6 million actually owed to the player. I know fans don't care about that, but after a pair of money losing seasons, that's the kind of salary retention that means the most to NHL owners. The cap, though, the cap hit, I think, is what's important here. It's the it's the five point five three eight four six two over two years, like to a thirty seven year old. You're handcuffing yourself for no reason. You took on all of this money to a guy who's not worth that money. When in the negotiations, they had no choice but to send him there, and you still, even if it was free, you didn't have to send anything back. It's still not worth it because the money on the cap isn't what he's worth on the ice. Maybe the Blackhawks are saying because. Like we're not we're not about to retain any salary because you're getting I don't get it. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really you, doing my best. Trying to say I'm doing my best and I don't get it, guys. What Spec's I'm, trying I'm, to say is Daryl trying Pace so hard to be to nice. Save. He wants the billionaire of a of a of a, a a drugstore chain, which by the way we're not closed down during the pandemic. Billionaire owner of drugstore chain wants to save two million dollars a season on a hockey player. No, give me a break. There's no way. What, wasn't this it's guy going to pick up and move the whole damn team to Seattle? Well, no, because Batman would have been like, yeah, no, you're not. Um, it's, it's funny that it's, it's just really funny that that could be a narrative. Like, well, you know what? Uh, Ken Holland's playing uh, chess while the rest of you losers are playing I'm not checkers. buying that. He saved $2.3568 million per season. And the Oilers can finally hit the cap floor. I mean, Wow. Aren't the Oilers a fucking cap team? Don't they cap out every year? Well, what's so happening? Here's I'm tr- so I'm trying to do this on the fly. They they have right now 16.2 million dollars in cap space. Hey, pretty good. But now you've just eaten up about 5. Okay. 5.5. Yeah, but minus Jones and it's like 4.7. Right, right. So, something something like that. But you gotta sign a bunch of guys. You gotta re-sign some guys. You do not. You essentially don't have a goalie, 
unless your plan next year is Koskinen and Staylock. Because <laughs> you're talking, yeah, they're talking to Mike Smith still, but there's no point signing him until after the expansion draft. Clefbaum is on LTIR, so that's a consideration. Oh, oh, f- fellas, I don't get it. I, 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 I told you. Being really nice, I understood the merits of acquiring Duncan Keith to give up a young defenseman and a prospect. No salary retained when the Blackhawks were so handcuffed. Boy, oh boy, I don't understand. The Oilers just paid Caleb Jones and a mid-round pick for a very expensive assistant coach. 